It's Madden NFL 22 on EA Sports, and we'll see who rules the skies in today's battle. It's the reigning Super Bowl champs and the Falcons coming up next. The weather this time of year in the South, perfect. Fall football weather, and we've got the roof wide open here at Mercedes-Benz Stadium in the heart of Georgia. Nothing like the fanfare of introductions to an NFL game, and that was in evidence a moment ago. Fireworks, pyrotechnics, you name it. This crowd is ready as their guys get set to match up between the Seattle Seahawks and the Atlanta Falcons. Hello again, everyone. Brandon Gordon along with Charles Davis. And Charles, we take a look at this Falcons team as they interplay. They come in with some fresh legs as they got the week off last week thanks to the early season bye. And usually you hope your bye comes a little bit later in the year. But when you get a chance to get fresh legs back, you take that time and you run with it. Meanwhile, for our visitors, the Seahawks, we're in October now, so everything, everybody should be coming into form, shouldn't they? They really should, and what you have now is a full routine established about what you want to get done and full focus on the season. A scoreless game here early on, but how much longer will that hold? Hold up as we've got action in the red zone on first and ten. On first down, Wilson. And this will be caught by Metcalf for a Seahawk touchdown. D.K. Metcalf with touchdown number seven on the year. And the Seahawks have taken a first quarter lead. And in the red zone, I guess this is why you have a guy like that on your roster. Without a doubt, if you have him, you use him because he's a guy who's going to win just about every time. Let's jump back into the action with this defense up against a first and 10 at the 11. Now Gordon on first down. And they'll lose yardage here. They go backwards to the 13-yard line. Two yards the loss, second and 12. Part of their struggles last week was getting these negative plays on first and second down. That's something they have to be wary of as this game continues. On second and 12, Ryan. And it's caught. Touchdown, Falcons. Calvin Ridley, his third touchdown now are an extra point away from tying the football game. When you're a great route runner, it makes you that much better as a receiver because now your quarterback trusts that you're going to be where he expects. And they are back down to the 500 mark after two straight losses. And Charles, this is a team that, to be frank, is their play has really dropped off the last couple of weeks. And Brandon, I think there's a sense around the building that they can't let this losing streak get any worse than it is. Because if they were to lose here and fall below 500, then you're playing catch up the rest of the way. They've got to take a stand and make it stop right now. Solid way to start the drive. 13 yards, picking up the first. For a tight end, he's got good straight line speed. And on that route, he's often the guy that gets overlooked. Nice job there of finding him in stride for really good yardage. Now a nice play defensively on first down as this is knocked away and incomplete. Here's second and ten. Well, you know, in this club, there were some reports earlier in the week, and most have heard this by now, the so-called unnamed sources that were saying all is not rosy in that locker room. There's whispers that one or two guys, CD, have kind of had enough of how things are going and have been going. How would you handle that as a coach? Well, you and I both know all the coaches that we've dealt with and come in contact with. They'd love to get their hands on those unnamed sources, wouldn't they? But they know that that's not possible, so I think they've got to go in there and make sure that this isn't a distraction. They also know that once the grumbling starts, 
it becomes a slippery slope and it's hard to stop the fall. But I think you need to sit some guys down and say, hey, look, we're still hoping to be a playoff team this year. We need you guys to be bought in with what we're doing. Come on, let's get on board. They'll let this go for the end zone. And he finds Lockett in the end zone. Touchdown, Seattle. Tyler Lockett, his second touchdown on the season. And the Seahawks have taken the lead. You normally talk about the mobility and the accuracy first, but the arm strength, that's what can turn Russ into danger, Russ. And as that ball was hanging in the air with the receiver streaking downfield to meet it, here in the stadium... Time to jump into the action, and we have a red zone alert as this defense looks to stop a first and 10 at the 15-yard line. On first and 10, it's Ryan. And incomplete. A lot of times it's that first read that you have. Maybe you get it in pre-snap, and he locked in on his target, but he was covered quite well, and that one's incomplete. After the incomplete pass here now is second and 10. Here's Ryan. And that's going to be incomplete. From the snap, he certainly looked like he knew where he wanted to go with the ball, but surprise, that guy was covered. So that took his attention elsewhere to no avail. It's been a pretty long drive. This will be play number nine, and they need 10 yards out of it on third. Again, Ryan. And that's incomplete. Just what Seattle was hoping for, the coverage holds, and now fourth down tight defense there on third down but what a product of good coaching and even better execution because he realized he's in field goal range no sense forcing anything and he made sure he didn't the kick by Carlson is good and they'll cut the lead back down to four now at 14 10 so the three points there in CD that helps him inch a bit closer yeah partner when you're losing you into an intriguing situation. The offense going for it on fourth. Fourth and two. They're going on fourth down. It's Ryan. And oh, it'll be intercepted. Picked off by Bryce Callahan. And a big turnover there as his guys will get the football back. Quite a decision there on fourth down. They didn't just want the first. They wanted six points. And following the interception, they're going to come away with neither. And that's too bad, partner, because they really went for it on that one, right? Because I think in their mind, sometimes the illogical play is the logical play. But in this case... Second quarter, this defense looking for a big third down stop here. They're already down on the scoreboard, just trying to get the ball back to their offense. Second quarter, this defense looking for a big third down stop here. They're already down on the scoreboard, just trying to get the ball back to their offense. He completes it to Tate. Now the Falcons going to use one of their timeouts. It's just their first, so they'll have two. They run for it with Carson. And he will have the first down across the 20 to the 19-yard line. From the red zone now, they'll look to throw. End zone caught. Touchdown, Seattle. Making a hat trick for Russell Wilson. Three touchdown passes now. And the Seahawks add on to their lead. And he's a little bit on the shorter side as a receiver. Maybe sometimes for the defense, tough to find the little guys, right? Yeah, sometimes they get lost in the traffic. But usually what it means is that rather than just winning with height or even speed, they use their quickness to find a way to get open. Well, Tom... Oh, 
This defense in need of a big stop in a tight game in the fourth quarter. Let's see if they can get that stop they need. Third and two, now Wilson. He's got his man, this is Tate. And he is going to have a Seahawks first down. They needed three, he doubled that, he got six. Russell Wilson and company in the red zone as we'll jump in to see what the Seahawks can do here. Throwing is Wilson. And this will be caught by Metcalf for a Seahawks touchdown. Russell Wilson now with four touchdown passes on the afternoon. And the Seahawks find a way to stretch their lead. Now that's certainly an important touchdown there. It makes this a two-score game. But as we've seen, No hesitation in this situation. Down a couple scores late in the game. This offense is staying out there on fourth. Needing the tough yards, they run it with their fullback. And he will have the first down as he gets this to the 47. This offense has been lighting the scoreboard up. Now the question, can they add to their lead? We drop you in a red zone situation in the second half. The Seahawks in victory formation as they go ahead and take the knee. Falcons going to use their third and final timeout as they'll talk things over prior to this upcoming second down play. A lot of points put on the board so far by this offense. Now they're looking for more. Already winning here in the second half ball in the red zone. One final kneel down here, and that should just about do it. And that knee will do it. So they snap the losing streak. Always a good feeling. Yeah, I don't know if this one right here when they're taking a knee is as much exultation as exhalation, right? They just breathe a sigh of relief. Finally got a win, needed one desperately. So the victory here for Seattle, and they were spurred on by a strong performance in that fourth quarter as they held their opponents off the scoreboard. Everyone wants to pitch a shutout for the entire game, but when you throw one in the fourth quarter, that tells everyone that you're getting stronger and dominance is starting to take over, right? The way that you close, the way that you finish, that gets preached to you from the time you're playing Little League football all the way up through, and they closed them out with a big-time performance down the stretch. So for the Seahawks, they move back over 500 now at four and three. And they'll have another road date next week with the Los Angeles Rams. Meanwhile, for Atlanta, the loss here will move them back to 500 at three and three. And they'll be back home next week as they're set to take on the Carolina Panthers.